month. So it hasn't affected our okay. budget. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Senator Waters. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Dr. Reichelt. Uh, could you give us an update on when the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park strategic assessment is due to be finalised? Um, we're, we're working hard on the um, reaching, getting it to the point where we can um, submit it to the minister for consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, it's, um, it's in the hands of the minister on when it would be um, uh, the release for public consultation, and then after that public consultation, there'd be um, the step of finalising it. So we're we're um, we're still hopeful that that would happen in the coming quarter. Your submission to the minister, that is, yes. or the minister's then release for public consult. Well, I can't speak for the minister, but Your we're hopeful in the next quarter. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, now on that. Is it correct to say that as part of that strategic assessment, Gabrumpa has commissioned a report or perhaps several reports about the impacts um, and management of dredging in the World Heritage Area? Uh, yes, it is correct. What's the current status of that research? Um, could I check? I'll just ask um, Dr Smith to bring, bring the report up to date. The main one I'm aware of is, is funded by the department, actually. We work closely with the department as well as Queensland uh, on a thing called Regional Sustainability Program it, it is the area that it was funded from. But could you just describe what's happening with the dredge Certainly. project, please? Uh, Dr Adam Smith, I'm the Director of the Environmental Assessment and Management Team at the Marine Park Authority. The Regional Sustainability Project is looking at dredge and dredge spoil sites. Mm -hmm. That's a modelling study that's being done by a number of consultants. We went out to open tender. It's focusing on five of the major ports and it's mm -hmm. working very closely with the ports industry using some of their data to model how far and for what period of time dredge spoil remains in the environment. There's going to be a series of eight reports, with the final one being a summary. Four have been drafted to date, and uh, the delivery of the final is expected in the next four to six weeks. It's an integral part of the strategic assessment, and some of the figures obtained from that research are being incorporated into the strategic assessment. Thanks, Dr Smith. Um, so you say four of those reports have been uh, produced so far. There's a reference in the supplementary public environment report for the Abbott Point dredging proposal that mentions these, perhaps these reports, I presume it's these reports, and says that they've been reviewed by the Queensland Ports Association. Have they been provided to other stakeholders for review as well? There's been a draft that's been discussed with the ports, but no, they haven't been provided more widely. When the reports have been finalised, then they'll go out for public discussion. Well, given that you're sharing the drafts with the Ports Association, could you share with us now a flavour of the conclusions that the reports are reaching? Uh, the simple conclusion is that dredge spoil potentially moves further than previously predicted because the new modelling is using ocean currents as well as traditional wind and waves. Okay. Uh, so they're also um, three-dimensional models. Correct. As opposed to two-dimensional. Okay, thank you. Um, is it correct that those reports have concluded so far that the amount of suspended sediment in the Great Barrier Reef uh, due to re remobilisation from dredging is the same as the amount flowing into the reef from land-based sources? I think that's a complex question that we'll have to take on notice, but we're certainly interested in the comparison between natural versus anthropogenic impacts. Mm. And certainly in the case of Abbott Point, we're looking quite closely at that as part of the assessment for the port activities there. Okay, is it of a similar order? What's coming down from the rivers to what's being re-suspended? It from depends the on what your assumptions are. And obviously during flood periods, it happens during a wet season. Dredging often happens during a different time, but roughly in the same order of volume. Okay, thank you. Has Gamropa assessed the extent to which this additional um, sediment will undermine the improvements that that successful reef rescue program has made so far? 
I'm not sure if that's going to, is that being taken into account in the current project or? I would expect us to link the, all, uh, the thing that we are moving towards is a more cumulative effect analysis, which would take into account all sources of uh, any disturbance to the environment of the barrier reef. So um, without being able to describe exactly how we're doing that, the principle of what you're saying is what we would like to do. We would like to have an ability to assess all impacts when, and put, put any particular decision in the context of all of the disturbances that are happening. Okay, but have you specifically looked at whether or not the gains made by reef rescue will then be effectively undermined by the re-suspension of, of dredge spoil? and the remobilising. It's a, it's a difficult well one to answer exactly, but it, uh, it, what I, I think it was in, implicit in what I was saying is that, uh, w that it would be very obvious um, where there's been gains made if that was being reversed by some other activity like spoil mm. disposal. So, so you, you are assessing that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for the, agent, the uh, scientist here who's doing the work, so is, yeah, just, is that likely to be a part of that? Just to add to that, Reef Rescue is looking at gains across a number of factors, including sediments, nutrients, mm. pesticides, etc. Mm. We are looking at the quantum of the benefits of the Reef Rescue program and comparing it to the potential impacts of certain dredge spoil disposal activities. Okay. And what That's have you good. found so far on, in that respect, Dr Smith? Well, we're still undertaking the assessment for Abbott Point, and um, so we're working closely with the department on that. That's not a public document at this stage. Okay, so nothing you can share with us at this not point? Not at this stage. Okay. Now, you mentioned earlier that the modelling being undertaken by the Gabrumpa study is, is taking into effect those deep ocean currents. Is that is the Abbott Point um, PER modelling also taking that into account? The initial Abbott Point PER did not take into account the ocean currents. We've had a subsequent series of workshops with North Queensland bulk ports and some of the other stakeholders to look at the limitations of that modelling, as well as our own research to try and get all the information on the table mm. so we all have a common platform in order to make the best possible decision for the environment and industry. Uh, so given that your research sounds like it's being more comprehensive than um, the developers' research, what a surprise that is, uh, are you providing that to the Environment Minister so that he can um, examine it before making his final approval decision on the Abbott Point project? Um, absolutely. We're working very closely with the Department on our assessments, which I assume will go towards briefing the Minister. And has the Minister received those four draft reports so far? Um, not yet. The EPBC Act has a time frame for Abbott Point decision, which is sometime in July. So I think the Minister and his advisers are aware of the, the broad mm. picture of Abbott Point, but not the detail. Um, will those reports be made public uh, before that July decision time frame on the Abbott Point proposal? I can answer that. I'd, I'd have to uh, check with uh, the processes underway with the department. Um, generally, all our material does become public, especially if they're scientific underpinnings, the exact timing of it, I would need to um, seek advice uh, because we're working, it's a parallel joint assessment process on this occasion. Okay. Perhaps Dr Drips, do you know if there's an intention to release those reports before the I haven't got, I haven't got the information made? to hand, Senator, but the reports are being prepared uh, for a couple of par parallel processes that you're aware of mm. that are occurring in Queensland. Mm. Um, so I can take that on notice and possibly cover it off with the officers who are here tomorrow afternoon who are handling that assessment. Thank you. That'd be great. Uh, now, in terms of just sticking with that Abbott Point proposal, I understand that there's um, been a change to the proposed location of the uh, offshore dumping of the dredge spoil, or rather the proposed site is now no, no longer the proposed site and there doesn't seem to be a proposed dump site specified at this point in time. Do you agree that it's important that the site for offshore dumping be known and the impacts on that site be fully examined before an approval is given? Uh, Senator, that is best practice in order to have a specific location so that you can undertake an assessment of the impacts in order to make a decision. Is that going to happen? Um, again, we're working very closely with the proponents. There has been a number of alternative 
sites discussed, some with the community, including local council and fishers and us. Um, but the current supplementary PER identifies more a concept of a disposal area. Senator, it's, if I could just add that um, Dr Smith's being cautious because a, as a decision maker in his own right, it, it, it's um, incumbent uh, to allow up until the point of the decision for new information for mm. whatever changes the proponent may wish to make. So um, it, it wouldn't probably be appropriate to, 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 uh, for him to air his current thinking of the decision. But, but I think his, his best answer you've had already, which is that it is best practice to sure. be specific. So if the proponent does come back and actually specify a site for dumping, which I certainly, as you say, would be best practice to do so, will there be enough time for the uh, authority, as well as for the department, but I'll take that up separately, to then examine the impacts Sorry, on Ms. the Sorry, Marine Ms. Park and the World Heritage Valleys of that particular dumping site before Senator, the decision has to be made? If I could just say, I think the, um, it, the hypothetical nature of the question makes it, um, it it's potentially interfering with the, the process. Um, sure. Perhaps I'll uh, rephrase it. Is there an ability for the authority to press pause on the assessment process in order to then examine the impacts of the proposed site before a decision has to be made? Uh, with the uh, joint decisions, the, the sequence is set out in the Act that the Federal Minister would make mm. a decision before the authority. Um, so whether the, the ability is there to stop I the I believe clock. the minister can stop the clock to seek further information from the proponent or specified others. Um, yes, the EPBC mm. Act can stop the clock mm. and we're working closely with our SUPAC colleagues. And given you say it would be best practice for the site to be known before the approval decision is made, uh, would it be standard practice for the authority to advise the minister to so stop the clock until that information was to hand? that um, are about things that might occur in the future and have not yet occurred. Um, I'm not sure that they're well positioned to, to answer questions about things that, that might occur. Okay. Well, you've said it would be best practice to do so, so hopefully the authority then carries that through in their own management practices. Look, I want to move on now. Um, given the unprecedented floods in Queensland, uh, the Queensland Government has recently, over the last um, little while, permitted the release of contaminated mine waters into the Great Barrier Reef, as I'm sure you well know. Do you have figures on how much contaminated water has been released into the reef? Um, do you have the, the mines brief? Um, no, I don't have the, the brief with me. We don't have figures on the amount, uh, not to hand, mm -hmm. um, on the amount that's been released. The one comment I would make, Senator, is in most instances, and uh, in particular with some of the, the mines of more concern, by waterway, they're a very long way from the marine park. Mm. And therefore, if we look at contaminants which are reaching the marine park, mm -hmm. um, we haven't had any figures um, um, which indicate any, any concern to us at this stage. So you are undertaking an assessment of the impact on the reef from either the quantum of the water or the contaminants in the water to be able to draw that conclusion? We're not taking undertaking an assessment um, on our own. We work closely with Queensland. Who has been who carried out uh, monitoring and testing of water from mine releases and mine site discharges after those floods? And is it the government that's doing those studies, or is it the mining companies that are doing that monitoring? Sorry, I, I, was, I was still on the previous question, but could I just uh, add yeah, that sure. the, the why um, Australia is worded it that way is that I, I did ask that question in house. What's mm. the effect? Mm. Um, and the advice was that there wouldn't be a detectable effect um, on the marine environment of the marine park. Um, that's not to say that the riverine environments aren't considerably affected nearer to mm. the sites. Um, so to that extent, it, it's probably the point, the thing you're pointing to is, is an environmental problem for the, for the Queensland government mm. as opposed to the effect on the reef. Um, and it's because the effect is thought at the moment to be negligible that we haven't diverted resources to trying to find that negligible effect. Um, if anything changed or if we got new information about more transport to the ocean than, than we understand to be happening, um, we certainly would. So Dr time. Reichelt, you're happy to take the Queensland Government's word for that? You're not undertaking, as no. the authority, your own studies to determine whether those claims are accurate? No, the, um, uh, 
we've done our own assessment of the likelihood of an impact on the Ah, well, that was my earlier question that I thought you'd said no to. Can you talk me through the assessment that you've done? Um, I don't have the um, brief with me, uh, but I'd be happy to provide information on, on notice. Thank you. That'd be great. So I'm after um, some what, details and the evaluation? findings of any assessments and evaluations that you've done to determine the possible impact yes. on the reef from those discharges. Has the authority required a permit for those water releases? That wouldn't be a, a something we could require, okay. to my knowledge. Okay. And have you um, raised this issue with the minister? The minister has sought information, and is, um, yes, we've had that, that exchange. Okay. What's your view of the likely impacts on the reef of those discharges, both in the short term and the long term? Um, the advice I've had is negligible. Um, it, it sounds like we're only interested in the marine park when I say that, but that's our job is to look mm. after the marine park. Sure. So, um, the impacts on the river systems are probably considerable. And again, just one site. final question, if I could, Chair. Sorry to interrupt you there, Dr. Reichelt. The advice you've received from the Queensland Government is that the impacts will be negligible. Are sorry, you across... can I correct you? Uh, I, I've said we've done our own evaluation. Oh, sorry, you have clarified that. Yeah. So based on your own assessment, you've You've we don't see it as a, a risk to the reef per se. Okay. And just on that earlier point that I think Mr Elliott mentioned about the monitoring that's been done, can you just clarify for me, is that monitoring being done by the government's, the state government's own authorities or whether they're relying simply on the monitoring of the mining companies themselves? It includes a combination of, of both. both. The, the, there are required monitoring at some of these sites by the proponent, but there is also monitoring carried out by both the state and we have monitoring programs which are conducted in the marine park which mm. allow us to see what's happening at that end. One of the things we found that was one of the, um, the things of more concern from the Queensland perspective was salinity, so salt, mm. um, which of course by the time in the marine environment is not really an issue, so it's more of a freshwater, mm. freshwater, con be. freshwater concern and given that mm. some of these things are a very long way away from the marine park in terms of by waterway. Um, you've got a significant dilution factor by the time it gets to the marine park as well. Chair, if I could ask just one very small administrative uh, I question. Think, uh, we've all had a fair go. The government's at four minutes.